there's going to be a lot of people listening to this, Mickey, who are parents, right? So they're going to be their 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 athletic heyday might be behind them. They're not taking the high risk uh, activities. Their risk of concussion we'll talk about later because that's going to be the car accident, the fall. Uh, literally, I know somebody the other day that was bending down to pick something up under a table, and when they came up, they had that enormous posterior whack of the head, sustained a concussion there. But in thinking about their kids who are playing sports, whether it's you know soccer, football, you name it. What is the best advice you offer to those parents? So they're saying, um, I think little Billy or little Susie has a concussion, you know, just based on the symptoms. Uh, we just took him off the field right away. Do we need to come out and see you in Pittsburgh? How many other centers of excellence are there in the country where we could go and get this level of bespoke treatment? That's a hard question to answer, Peter, and it's a, but it's a great question. And yes, there are centers around the country that do a really good job with this injury. And you want to start at places that have experience and they, they call themselves concussion clinics or specialty clinics. I think they're much more equipped to do the work than a general pediatrician. I mean, you want to, might want to start with your pediatrician, but you if you have specialist clinics in your area, you want to start there um, because they're familiar with the literature and the tools and and by and large, are well, very well equipped to do to manage these injuries. Approximately, um, how many of these are there? Does every well, major medical center have one now? Isn't that crazy? We were the first program, literally in the world, um, doing clinical work or studying this injury, and now I would say that every major geographic, you know, area has a center like this now, which is really exciting. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, blows my mind to talk about that. It's only twenty years later, you know. So. Yes, this does exist in most places. Uh, if you're in rural Idaho or something, you may not have access to it. But you know, now that telemedicine is a is a medium that's widely used, I mean, you have that option available a lot of times, et cetera. So, the the access is better than it ever has been with that. What what are what are kind of the just just off the top of your head, kind of top five programs in the country that that you would say would be great places for people to start if they're willing to travel and there's availability? Obviously, your program. What would be some, the other five that you would put on that list? Another program I have an incredible amount of respect for is Anova in Washington D.C. One of my former fellows is there. We've had thirty three fellows train under us under me, and they're at various sites around the country. I think they do a, most of them do a really really good job. Um, I would say off the top of my head, um, uh, I think Boston Children's does a pretty good job overall. Um, I know there's clinics down in Houston, Texas that do a good job. There's clinics in, in Phoenix that do a really good job. There's clinics in California that do a good job. I mean, I, my, one of my fellows is in North Dakota right now doing great work. I mean, they're they're out there. You can even go to our website and kind of find out who we train and where those patients are. There's access to places, but there's there's really good programs out there I have great respect for. And we're actually collaborating with a lot of these programs and doing research as well, So, which is a good thing. And would your advice, Mickey, to that parent be, so let's just say, you know, the child experiences a concussion on Monday afternoon. Is your advice to them, you know what, why don't you just kind of keep the kid doing his thing, her thing? And if in two weeks it's not better, go see the specialty clinic. Or do, is your advice, no, go to the clinic right away on Tuesday? I agree with that. Because again, mm -hmm. based upon our research, the earlier we see someone, the quicker they get better. Got it. And you do want to start these treatments pretty quickly. And I, I would say if you can be seen within seven days of an... You know, the first thing you got to do, Peter, is make sure there's not an intracranial bleed, right? I mean, like... Yeah, yeah. You have so to do the medical thing. You yeah. got to make yeah, sure there's, you know, the red flags aren't there, et cetera, and rule that out. But once that's ruled out, I do think seeking specialty care within a week of injury is going to lead to a much quicker outcome, which is what we're looking so for. So basically, it's never too early and it's never too late to seek help for this is what I I'm hearing. I completely agree with that. Yes. Yes. Does all of that apply as we now move from the kid to the parent? So if it's me and I'm out there playing with my kids and they somehow talk me into climbing a tree, which they often do, but I fall, whack my noggin, same thing. If like, let's say I go to the ER, I, we get the CT scan. I don't have a bleed. There's There's nothing going on. But I'm, let's say I feel totally fine. I'm like, I got a bump on my head, but I feel fine. Would you, and I medically cleared, should I go and get evaluated or only if I have a symptom? 
Yeah, if you feel fine, I wouldn't necessarily feel that's necessary. No, but um, again, the symptoms can be subtle. You know, what we talked about. Yeah, that's that's that that's my point. Is like without someone in the ER who's going to do the real oculomotor test or whatever, I I can speak to the symptoms, but I can't speak to the signs on my own. Correct. Yeah, and it's even hard to speak to the symptoms. You know, but dizziness, fogginess, fatigue, light sensitivity, noise sensitivity, headache, obviously. Difficulties falling or staying asleep, nausea, car sickness, difficulty in busy environments, cognitive issues, you know, all those things can, you know, I mean, but as long if you're not having any of those problems and no, live your life, man, it's, it's okay, you know, yeah. but it can be subtle. That's for sure. But it's not going to bite you, Peter. You know what I mean? It's not like, I don't want to, like, it's something where if your symptoms are, are pretty nasty and they're not getting better, yeah, you better see someone, right? I mean, you want to get in. The yep. sooner you get in, the better it's going to be. If the symptoms are very subtle and improving, I'm not that worried about it, honestly. You just don't want another head injury while that's going on. And so that may be a reason. If you're a weekend warrior, you got to pick up basketball game you want to play in the next weekend, you probably want to get it checked out to make sure this, everything's normal. If you're not a weekend warrior, you're not going to hit your head again and it's getting better, I'm not so sure you need to see someone. Thank you.